Hello and welcome back once again to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. Um, what's all this mess you see before you, you may ask? Well, I've decided it's time to get on and actually start building some of these um, circuits and intermediate products so in slightly larger numbers. So, since the last episode where I was talking mostly about this um, smelting array down here, um, I've, I've moved on and I'm, I'm starting to use the products from it. As you probably remember, the idea behind all of this was to get a steady supply of all of the inputs elsewhere and stone appears to be going a bit funny but never mind that's um, probably all right on the other end all the rest of them look like they're running okay and so the idea of these was so that I could have things like this big facility up here which is just making all the green circuits and then they can be um, happily carried away by train from here to wherever they're needed at the moment that isn't anywhere because I haven't started to import them anywhere yet however I'm aware that fairly soon I'm going to require large quantities of of lots of the uh, circuit types for making the next next science packs and that means greens red and blue and blue are extremely space and resource hungry to make so I don't really want to have them <coughs> I don't really want to have them pulling off the bus because it will just swallow up all of the resources on it so this area um, it went pretty well um, built it up as you can see um, I quite require it needs a lot of solar power to keep it running that's one of the things I'm finding is that all of these outposts are now needing enormous solar arrays around them in order to, to power them I may still switch over to nuclear power once I can but other than that it's fairly it's, it's quite straightforward we've got the inputs of the um, the copper and the stone bricks and then they're getting passed up one belt of each into each of these sort of sub factories which are then churning through the copper oh dear I've got <laughs> okay I'm gonna have to come up and fix this somehow I've got a load of iron ore in my um, in my copper uh, copper belts that must just be um, me messing up with uh, LTN again <laughs> I'll have to come over and have a look at that but anyway the theory behind all of this is that we've got the um, then we've got each of these sub factories building up the uh, the circuits and then feeding them down the uh, down the belts on into the into the um, stations down here nice and straightforward um, and these are just copy and pastes of the factories I had running off the main bus. The main advantage of having them here is that it's a sort of single central location for feeding all of the resources into and I don't have to worry about um, them going all the way down the bus and then getting used up by other things such as making ammunition. Um, what Wiring all these belts through was a little bit of a faff. Um, it's a bit of a mess as you can see but um, I've, I think I've kept it reasonably organised and, and reasonably easy to tell what's going on. Unfortunately, then the uh, the red circuits are a, a little bit more complicated. So coming back over here, that's what we've got building being built up here, and this is a, again a copy and paste of the same basic design. We've got the um, the green, exactly the same green circuit um, facilities going on um, along here. However, I've only got one bank of each of these because that's enough to use up um, about half of the copper on the bar, on, on on the belt, and then pass it on to these um, red circuit production machines up here. Other than that, it's working in exactly the same way. Again, once again, I've copied the basic design of the red circuit production from off the bus down here, because well, it ain't broke. Let's not fix it. Uh, I had to do a little, a little bit, a few little fancy things in order to get the um, get the uh, green circuits and and the plastic onto opposite sides of the belt. So here we've got the plastic being fed up and then put onto one side of the belt. And here the green circuits get dumped onto the other side. But again, once I designed that once, it was just a case of copying and pasting it. It was even more complicated to wind all the belts through each other here, but I think I've probably got it, except for this bit where I've forgotten to fill them in. Let's just do that. There we go. Um, I guess the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so once I actually start feeding all the resources in and some of them go nowhere or go to the wrong place, we'll realise I've made some mistakes. But I think I've probably got it right. The green circuit turn on went quite well, as you can see from this... Um, snippet I, gather, I, I captured earlier. Um, the only thing I did wrong I think was that I forgot to uh, bring in enough enough inserters so it didn't, whilst it's, it, all the resources went to the right place it didn't fully kick, kick into full, uh, going running full speed ahead but you know I, I've sorted that out now and it's now running quite happily. I also continued these sort of adventures in um, single uh, single RoboPort mine facilities like this one here as you can see if I hover over there that just touches the walls all the way around so that's all, that's all working nicely it's all it's all contained in the same in a single RoboPort which meant I could use them to build it and then to defend it as, and then to sort of keep keep it maintained and repaired as well so the um, there's a chest here that's got some spare turrets some spare power poles and apparently some spare, and some spare um, 
inserters in it. Everything I hopefully should need. If I need anything more than that, something's going very, very wrong. And then the um, the robo port's got a load of repair packs as well. I've had to increase the defences along here quite a bit since I built it though. These were getting smashed quite frequently. Uh, there seems to be, yeah, there's quite a large base over here that's just throwing biters at it. And um, yeah, even even using, using solar power here isn't enough to, to keep them calm and happy. I think a problem with copying and pasting this is going to be that the um, the solar panels are going to, and, and the miners are going to need to be in slightly different places for every single one of these I put down, depending on the shape of the ore patch in there. So I think I almost need, want to try and find a way to make a, make a blueprint that just has the surrounding walls, turrets, belts, stations, and so on in one in one blueprint. Then go in and put the miners in from another blueprint, and then copy and paste the uh, banks of the solar panels in afterwards. Um, my other worry is that is, is making sure there's enough power in these areas because miners are very very power hungry and solar panels don't produce much power. I've got the um, it, they tend to get to the point like this one has where they, where everything is full so the miners stop. So now, as you can see, there's there's full accumulated. There's very little power being used. But if you look further back, you can see there were points where it was really struggling, and there just wasn't there wasn't enough power available. Um, and so that's the thing I need to try and try and work around and get get past. I don't really want to split off to having a second um, a second robo port for these things because that's going to just double the size of them and double the uh, and make it take a lot longer to build. But maybe I'll have to. The alternative is, as I was saying, once I get nuclear power, I can run a train full of steam out here every so often, dump the steam out into tanks, and then have turbines using that steam to uh, to produce the power. Factorio clearly doesn't care about um, <laughs> about the fact that liquids and, and things cool in tanks, but uh, let's not worry about that because it does make it a bit more practical. I've also discovered I've got to the point where um, biters are, have got challenging again. So bases this sort of size, I struggle to... I've, I've done a fair amount of damage to this one, but I died about three times in the process. It turns out that neither the putting up a row of turrets and standing behind them lobbing off rockets, or the running in there with a tank and just trying to circle around it while shelling it seems, seems to be quite enough. Uh, I have... I'm, I'm hoping if I come... actually if I come over here, I built up a facility up here that's making normal... Um, I've made an awful lot of them... normal shells for, for, the, for the tank, so it's, I can now actually arm the tank properly rather than just using it with um, with a machine gun on it or or using it to run away. So that's that's an improvement, but these shells aren't particularly effective. I did go in, I did make a few of the explosive ones to see if they were any more effective, and it turns out they are a lot more effective. So let's switch over what we're making here to just making the explosive shells. Um, and we'll, I guess, use these somewhere on, on, on easier base, easier biter bases, perhaps, because they, they do work. It takes a couple of them to take out a, um, a biter nest, but when they do, they have, the, they, they actually manage to penetrate quite well. So if they, if they hit something and destroy it, they will then carry on and hit something, hit whatever's behind it. The um, corollary of that, of course, is that if they, um, if you aim at something that's got something else in front of it, they won't. They will hit the thing in front first, rather than going past, like, um, like rockets and at least I think rockets do. I, I'm not sure. They, they never really have quite enough range for me to test that one. Machine gun bullets certainly do. So you can't quite run past and just shoot shoot the um, the, the nests and then come back and worry about the, uh, the the worms and the biters later, because there's a fairly high chance that all the shells you fire will go will hit biters on the way in. Which reduces the effectiveness of them quite a lot. Still, the explosive ones might be better for that because they'll still do splash damage. So, other than that, I've had a couple of issues with LTN dumping things in the wrong place. So I did have to go in and clear out some, um, I think it was coal from one of the iron supplies. That was a bit of a pain. I appear not to have enough LTN trains running because I keep getting alerts saying there's nothing in the depot. I've just had an asteroid attack on my um, on the a plant here as we see. Oh well the bots can deal with that. Um, I am looking forward to getting to the point where I can actually defend against these asteroids properly but um, I'm not quite there yet because that's going to need blue circuits and um, yeah that's this is stage two of making blue circuits. I can now make a copy of this um, once this is built and start making blue circuits off it or maybe I'll um, see what do blue circuits require in this version in this mod pack. Okay, the two circuits in massive quantities and sulfuric acid. Okay, so that's that's not too bad. It's one more ingredient essentially, um, but it is an enormous quantity of green circuits. Of what I'll get through doing this. So, I think what I'm going to do is is crunch the numbers and work out how many how many belts of how, how basically how to keep how to keep this sort of thing balanced. 
Um, as it is, this is fully balanced and should produce a, a trickle at least of, uh, of the red circuits, which will then obviously go into the, into the stations. Uh, blue is going to be obviously quite a lot harder. I may end, end up needing to make multiple copies of the facility to do that. We'll see how, we'll see how it goes though, because hopefully I won't need quite as many of those um, as well. Uh, what else have I done? I think that's about it, really. Uh, I've um, built up a couple of extra mines. They seem to be insufficient. There's, um, we've got some copper being collected here, but yeah, this this mine is working very, very hard and still not keeping it fully satisfied. So I'm definitely going to need another copper mine. I keep seeing things pop up saying I don't have enough oil. So I might need to... How, how are we doing up here? There's still quite a lot of oil here, but obviously it's, it's not enough to keep the station satisfied. So we're going to need to get another another oil oil mine somewhere um, but otherwise this area seems to be running okay I've extended the plastic station here in in preparation for the red circuit production and I put in a coal drop-off station here because we're getting through a lot of coal in these um, making the plastic here and bringing it all in in the ammo train just wasn't practical anymore the ammo train was forever shuttling back and forth to here and never going never going off to other places that need it um, I think I've talked about having all these stations down here. I've now, with with all with the massive smelting array, I've now moved it so that all of the uh, resources are being brought in along, um, in by by train to the to the main base here. It looks like it's not doing a particularly good job of balancing the unloading, which is fair enough given that I haven't balanced it at all. Uh, I don't know if that's something I should worry about or not. Maybe I should just put belt balancers on each of these and. Um, on each of each one of these there's just about space and that will keep things a bit more make it make sure it uses it a bit more evenly um to be honest i haven't looked over here very much to see how it was how it's getting on so i've not really worried about it but that did mean i could get the ammunition production back up to speed again because now we've got a full half belt of copper and steel and and apparently half belt of iron coming in here and that's enough to keep this running at about two-thirds capacity because the half belt of copper just isn't enough for it and then that's enough to keep this train um, full yeah there's two two thousand ammunition in there it's that's that's full and it can keep all of my outposts armed so that's working all working quite well I still haven't really got onto any space stuff um, that's I guess is going to happen a bit more once I've got the um, red and the blue circuits up and running and I've got a bit more um, and I can, I, can, I can go back to looking at research again. Whether I want to do that on the bus or start pulling research off the bus, I, I don't know. It, it comes down a bit to how difficult it is to clear space at the moment because I don't quite, I don't really have the um, weaponry to take out biter nests, at least not the big ones, the big, the big biter bases. But then that said, there's quite a lot of space down here that only has little ones. So maybe I could put the blue. Um, blue circuit production down here and then some uh, sort of research park over here. I think this is something I'm going to have to have a bit of a think about, but uh, that gives you an overview of what I've been up to. As always, any questions, let me know and um, I'll, I'll talk about them in the next episode. But for now, I think I just, gonna, I just need to spend a load of time waiting for this to finish building. <laughs> it's taking a long time because everything's being pulled over by, from the uh, from the main bus and the bots are extremely slow. Uh, I've got... I. I'd managed to get used to the um, the Angel Bobs ones, where the the, the high end bots are really really quick, and this sort of stuff gets laid out very very quickly. Um, but in vanilla, having a a bot catchment area this sort of size causes all kinds of problems. The other thing I want is this um, is requester chests, so I can start having a proper system here for loading up my building train, rather than having everything just being delivered to me using the uh, logistics requests. If I can put in a row of chests along here that will request specific items, they'll all be fully loaded. I can roll in with the train, empty the chests into the train very, very quickly, and then head out and do whatever building I need to do. As it is, it all has to come from wherever wherever it comes from. And also, I've got all these chests filling up with junk and um, resources. And so I want, I need to turn all of these into red chests, or ideally, um, what colour are they? The, the active provider chests, uh, purple chests, and then have blue chests on all of the drop off points uh, so that all of the iron, the copper, the stone, everything like that gets dumped back onto the, onto the bus and cycled through and used again. I can also use that for pulling things like yellow belts that have been upgraded out of the, out of the system, or yellow inserters could, could be dumped into here. Uh, that could become a green chest and uh, to buffer them, and so on. All the sort of things I, I got I was um, accustomed to from my previous playthrough that I just haven't unlocked yet. 
but that's still to come. Uh, I'll get that. I'll get them sooner or later, and I uh, hope you'll come back to see see how I get on in the, with that in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Thank you.